We are in the April of 2024 and we have not heard any new product announcement from Sonos and Patrick Spence, the Sonos CEO, did promise two product releases a year, one in the first half and another in the second half. Now we are running out of time for the first half of 2024, but there is good news in this 16.1.1 software update. Now let me try to explain this. Now very seldom we get a x.x.1 .x update, five in the last four years to be precise. There are no fixed patterns to this. Now, initial releases in 2020 and 2021 were features, some very substantial, but definitely not an x.1 x update. For those of you who are out of time watching this video, upfront summary for you, the update 16.1.1 is good to go. So if you have no more time in the video, do go ahead, update. And if you have some time to stay on, then listen to me explain how this update sounds and why there is a big hint in a new product launching. So stay on and find out more. Now, before I go on to the rest of the video, I would like to update on the poll that I've started doing. Now, I wanted to find out from the community what your update experience is. Now, why did I do that? Well, so you can share. I am just a sample size of one. When I say that the update is breaking or the update is good, it is just my system, my setup. Your experience may differ and I wanted everybody to be able to benefit from a sample size which is much larger than me one. So the first update I did, I got about 1,000 responses and this time round for 16.1.1, I've got a sample size of over 500. Now, 59% of you said that the update went smoothly. Previously in the 16.1 uh, update, it was 69%. 14% found it patchy but went through. Previously, it was 13%. So the total of good updates uh, experience is about 73% versus the previous 16.1 update experience of 82%. Now, failure rate is 6% versus 3% for 16.1. So for 16.1.1, the update process is probably not as smooth for some people. Now, 20% of you didn't update. 14% didn't update previously for 16.1, but I did that poll after I said it was good to update. So do you need to update to 16.1.1? Well, usually X.1 X is a small release, bug fixes, but this time around, it is slightly different. Do you need to do it now? Absolutely not. 16.1.1 will bring nothing extra to the table. Now, I'd like to run through the pattern of releases over the last four years. Releases with a X.1 X or 0.2 update, um, all these minor updates in the last four years. Now, 12.2.2, the release date was in August of 2020. It brought a significant feature, which is the dual sub setup. So as long as you have a sub gen three in your system, you can actually add another sub into the system. So that was a big feature update. 13.3.2 was released in 2021, and this was October. And I would say that they brought about dark mode. There was Sodos Radio HD, which is not a big thing. 13.4.1 release date in December of 2021. Also, another small update, it brought about Amazon Music Ultra HD, and there was Atmos support for Amazon Music Ultra. So again, not a big thing. Now, 15.1.2. Right, the release date was in March of 2023. And in March of 2023, the ERA 100 and the ERA 300 came about. So that minor release, the X.1.2, X was actually meant to roll out support for new hardware that was launching. Now, another clue, right? 15.7.1, release date, September 2023. The move to support was launched with this 15.7.1. Again, a minor update. And at that point in time, they did not release any release notes. So the last two updates of the minor update, X.1, X was for new products. There were no release notes for 16.1.1, which was released on the 9th of April. Why? Because they can't tell you what they are launching first. So where's the release for the first half of 2024 is nowhere to be heard, nowhere to be seen, but it is definitely coming soon. And this 16.1.1 is a big 
hint given the fact that they have not even given any release notes simply because they can't just tell you the name of the product that they're going to be launching in this release notes because they have not announced anything yet. Now let me move on to the sound quality. Now I expected there is not a huge variance in the sound profile. In fact, for the last one odd years of update, probably no sound signature changes, at least for the source arc. Now usually I smooth out the curve completely, but this time around it feels like the mid-range has been lifted just a tiny bit. I'm not sure if I'm feeling it wrong, but when I did the testing, you can see that there is a very slight lift. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with frequency response sweep, a simple explanation would be that it is a test of the output of the speaker at every frequency from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is 20 kilohertz. The system generates a fixed output in terms of dB or volume at every hertz and cycles through from 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz. 1980 times by right a completely neutral system will give you a flat response curve but Sonos has its signature sound not to mention that nothing in the world will give you a completely flat response even if you spend six figure sums on your system because there are amplifiers the circuitry and the speaker cones itself will differ your room will also affect the curve now sometimes you'll hear more bass than intended sometimes the treble will get eaten up by the furnishing at home now let's refer to the red curve here which is the frequency response for the solos arc with a pair of era 300 and a single sub gen 3 now situated in the studio right here where i'm doing this video now this is for version 16.1 before the upgrade. Now, this is something that we are all familiar with. There's emphasis on the low end, the base region. In fact, there's quite a bit of emphasis here, and that is almost like the Sonos signature sound profile, helped in no small ways by the Sonos sub that I have. Now, the high frequencies, which is the top end above 6 or 7 kilohertz, it will show a slight bump before tailing off towards 20 kilohertz. So that leaves a relatively flat mid-range, which is basically anything that is not bass and not treble. So nothing much to see here, but if you refer to the cyan curve, the cyan curve is the same frequency response that I did for the same system, almost exactly at the same time, one after another, except that it's on 16.1.1 freshly updated. Now, I did not expect any changes in the sound profile given that it is an X.1 X update. And true enough, the sound profile remains very similar. But there seems to be a slight uplift in the mid-range, just ever so slightly. You can see a small bump, very small bump in the frequency range of 200 hertz to 800 hertz. That's where a lot of vocals live. Now, you probably won't be able to hear it with your ears if you don't have two systems side by side with the same specs and configuration running different versions. Now, I don't have two systems where I have different versions on, so I can't do a back and forth. I'm not sure if I'm convinced and I can trust myself that there is a material difference. I can clock it down to just test runs to test runs variance, but I do average out um, after running a few rounds, so it should take away some of those variants, but it still exists. Now, if these sorts of tests that I do have been helpful, I do hope that you leave a thumbs up for this video, or if you have already subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please do so, and you can get updates for solos from this channel. There are also ways to support the channel in material form. A super thanks will give me a one-time tip for a small coffee. I also have a Patreon account where you can set up monthly contribution. You can also join the YouTube channel membership for monthly contribution. Now, if you do decide to do any of these, I thank you for helping to keep the channel going. Even if you don't, I will still be putting out content to benefit all viewers out there. Now, are there any new features released with this update? Now, this is easy. I don't see any new features, but same thing. Sonos update keeps breaking like as usual for the last one, two years. Although this time around, it does feel a bit faster. I still got a notification that the update didn't complete. But when I check again, I see that there's nothing to update and everything is done. Now, if you're curious why this is always the case, check out the video link that I'm putting up here and find out what happens in a Sonos update and why it keeps failing for some people like myself. 
Now, do we want to turn on auto update? Well, that's one way to solve all the headaches that come with updating. But in case it breaks a system or sound profile, I usually turn it off so that I'm in control of the process. I also want to do the before and after frequency sweeps for you guys. So I usually leave it turned off so I can have the chance to do the frequency sweep before I update and after update. So while Sonos has not updated the release notes for 16.1.1, I'm pretty sure we will get an announcement within the next three to four weeks. In fact, them not updating the release notes is probably the biggest hint. The last two times something like that happened, it was for a new product launch. So what could it be? Is it the headphones? Is it the refresh to the Sonos Arc called the Arc 2? or the Sonos M, which was released almost five years ago. Now, check out some of the videos that I've made right here. And if you want to know why Sonos update keeps breaking, maybe check out this video here where I go through in depth what happens within a Sonos update and why it fails for some people. I'll see you in one of those videos, if not in the new product launch.